this is Laura Live. And today we're going to talk to and about therapists. So BCBAs, SLPs, um, developmentalists, neurodevelopmentalists, neuro people who work with children with special needs. And um, there's been a lot of talk and things written over the last 10 years about different professions that are in trouble because of technology. And I just saw Temple Grandin last week and she was reading out a list of all these different professions that people on the spectrum should avoid because they're gonna be replaced by, by AI. And I'm gonna tell you that people are really wrong about one of them, therapy. Uh, she read that, she said, she said speech therapists are gonna be replaced by AI. I've read that in futurist books, I've read that all the time and in 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 Asha and a lot of the speech therapists are really kind of freaking out about this because they think their jobs are in danger. And I'm going to tell you, it's not true. Why do I know it's not true? Because I've done research on this and because I own one of the most, if not the largest AI companies for, for therapy in the world. And I can prove it. <laughs> it's not true. Therapists are more needed and going to be more needed in the future than they are now. The more, even with technology. And I'll explain to you why. So when I first started doing this whole Gemini thing, I created it as therapy homework for therapists because that's what I used it for. My kids had um, 40 or 50 or sometimes 60 hours of one-to-one -one therapy each every week. Crazy amounts of therapy. And even with all that therapy, my son did not learn anything receptively or expressively. Nothing. He was a non-responder, a complete non-responder until we added video modeling. Now, <clears throat> we only used the Gemini system for them while they were eating. So they saw it for about an hour and a half a day. That was it. The rest of the time they were in live therapy. So my idea was that I would just create this thing and give it to therapists and they could do it what we did. And then the kids would all be doing fabulously like my kids were because the kids now would have therapy homework given by the therapist. And when we first had our beta version of Gemini, we talked to hundreds or maybe even thousands of therapists, both ABA and SLPs all over the country. And everybody was super excited. They loved it. Nobody didn't like it. Everybody loved it. But the problem was then, <clears throat> was first off, which is still a problem today, <clears throat> therapists do not get paid to use a computer. Insurance doesn't pay them for that time. They have, they, <clears throat> they have to only, only get paid when they're working one-to-one -one with the child. Excuse me. <clears throat> So they're trying to figure out how are they going to get paid to do this. Secondly, parents would have to pay for Gemini. And the parents did not understand how a computer program, especially watching a video, which their kids watch videos all day long, how is that going to help? So we couldn't get the parents to do it at home. Because it was so new, all we had was research published with parents didn't care about research. They want to see smiling faces, testimonials from other parents talking about how great it was. So I thought, okay, well, I guess I got to go to parents first so I can get all the testimonials so that the parents will do it with the, with the therapist. So that's what we did. We launched to the public and I wouldn't even launch to the public until we'd been published twice. So we two different, we published twice by three or four different disciplines in those two papers in four different universities, completely different population. One was adults, one was little kids. And so once we were published, I said, okay, now I've got the backing, I can go to the public. And then, yeah, the rest is history. I mean, there's thousands of people all over the world who are using Gemini and the testimonials are insane. But because of that whole kind of convoluted way we had to get to where we are, um, a lot of the therapists thought that we were excluding them as parents. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I can prove that's not true, in fact, we're just proving a, published, a paper that's going to be published very soon is going to prove the necessi necessity of therapists. Absolutely, without a doubt, prove it for all time. And I'll tell you what happened. So as using Gemini, we would have a portion of the kids, as you see, do these crazy, amazing, wonderful things. They're talking right away. Everything's, um, everything is um, wine and roses and everybody's happy. Another portion of people say, we tried it and didn't work. Like, why are these, these two? It's not like every, anybody's in the middle. It's either it saved my child's life or it did not work at all. <laughs> why is this just two big things? So we started talking to all the parents that didn't work. And we scheduled appointments with them. And with them, we realized that they didn't do it right. They didn't do it right from the beginning. They never did it right. And I was 
very, you know, the, from the first time, little video of me explaining that Gemini will not work if you don't do it correctly. And so we tried to teach these parents how to do it right. And most of them just still weren't getting it. So it was a lot more, there was a lot more moving parts to doing it right than I really understood. So what we did is we took um, a bunch, I don't know, it may have been even close to 100, uh, 60 something, and maybe it was 100, 100 families who had, children had been using Gemini for um, six months with no vocal verbal speech. So most of these kids had actually diagnosed apraxia or suspected. And they, are, I think, were from all over the world, the English-speaking world at least. And um, we, a therapist, uh, BCBAD, oversaw their therapy program for over a year where she would get on the phone with the parents every week. She would have the parents videotape the kids and send them picture, videos. She would have the par parents videotape the parent interaction with, interacting with the child. She would tell the parents what sessions to create, what videos to use, because she really knows she's an expert at Gemini too, what videos to use and what, um, uh, and when to use them, how to use them. She did that every week. She talked to these parents for a half an hour every week. Guess what? The kids, the parents who stuck with it for the whole time, all of them saw vocal verbal speech come. Some of it's word approximations, but they understand what he's saying now. And these are kids who are, some of them are older, or some of them are 11, 12 years old, who never could even do verbal imitation before. And it took, obviously it takes longer. As I talked before, if you have severe apraxia, it can take a year. But they all saw gains, everyone, like miraculous kind of gains because they had oversight from a trained person. So these findings are so significant and the potential for false negatives with Gemini is so high that when we launched to Arabic, so we launched with Arabic about a month ago in the Arabic speaking world, we're in five languages, we're all over the world. But when we launched with Arabic, we decided not to use the English model. Our Arabic program is only therapist driven. Parents can't even create their own sessions. They talk to a therapist every week and the therapist creates the session, finds out what's going on, gives the parents hints, and then they have that feedback every week and the therapist is actually creating the session for the child. So <clears throat> we are about to, well, a, a, a researcher is about to publish this research that shows first a large group, usually special education research is just single subject, it's got a couple kids. This is a huge group of kids who had no gains from live therapy. So they went to Gemini. They had no gains from Gemini. And they put the two together, they had amazing, miraculous gains when you work the two together. We are so convinced at Gemini that this is the way of the future that we are going to be phasing out the parent-driven program and, have it, and phasing in a therapist-driven program. The problem is, again, it's much more expensive. If you have a person overseeing it, it's much more expensive. So we have to have uh, insurance cover the time that therapists use when they oversee a video program. And we're working with insurance companies right now to do that. But what's going to happen in therapy is completely different than what everybody's saying. Everybody's saying futurists, even Temple Grand, and everybody's saying that speech therapists are going to be obsolete. They're not going to need them anymore because of AI. Nope. Actually, if you, you can use psychiatry as a model. It used to be a long time ago that psychiatrists did talk therapy. This is before psychotropic drugs. And they talked with people and tried to get them through their problems. And it was all, you know, like the old laying on the couch kind of thing. Well, if you have severe psychosis, talking is not going to help you. You have to be in an institution because you're a danger to yourself or others. So many, 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 many people are um, institutionalized or were institutionalized and at the cost of $100,000 or more a year for their own safety and for the safety of society. Now with these drugs, they don't have to be institutionalized. They can live, they can have jobs, they can support themselves. And if they're on social security, it's only like 700 bucks a month. It's not $10,000 a month. And because the drugs keep them 
So they're not a danger to themselves. They're not a danger to, the, to other people. And they can live and they can be productive members of society. So now psychiatrists, instead of making before, they made about $80 to $100 an hour in talk therapy. They make $350 to $500 an hour. They prescribe medication. And that's their specialty. And that's not nothing to, you know, to... Um, look down on. <laughs> it's really hard to, to, to prescribe medication. There's a lot of medications out there and to get the right balance of the right combination of drugs to make this person function at their optimal best is a hard thing to do. You have a lot of experience with a lot of other patients who you work with who have similar symptoms and you can look at, look at their blood work, look at everything and dial it in perfectly. You only need to see a patient like 30 minutes once a month, but you are saving the state a ton of money. You are saving insurance companies a ton of money. You're saving society a ton of money. So instead of being $100 an hour, you're worth every bit that $350 to $500 an hour. And that's what's hap going to happen with therapists. Therapists, instead of, <clears throat> it's going to change the way it looks like. So you look at like before, the same like psychiatry. So before you see like with the CPA. <clears throat> CPAs, when they went to school, they used to learn a 10 key. And they were really good at adding up numbers. Um... Instead of using a 10 key now in school, you learn Microsoft Excel. And instead of having just a few clients because you have to add up all this stuff all the time, you can have five times the clients now because the computer does it, but you can think strategically about where they should move next with their finances. So it's so your your pro your the the time that you spend during the day as a CPA is very different. You're not sitting there adding up numbers anymore. You are an executive in your own practice. And that's what's hap going to happen with therapy. Instead, for let's say a behaviorist who's very highly trained in a very specific area of behavior, which is not necessarily, necessarily um, intuitive or logical. A lot of parent things that parents do out of just parent intuition and logic ends up being not the right thing to do when you're talking about special needs of behavior that there's a lot of research been done that if you do X, which would make, make sense at the time, is actually going to backfire. And so their behaviorists know all of this. They've been trained. They've worked with lots of kids, and they know what works and what doesn't. They should never, and they, in the future, they will never be sitting there flipping flashcards. They will never be sitting there doing receptive testing because that's what, they, that's what AI does. It does a lot better. It does it more, more efficiently, effectively, and goals are maintained. And we've known all this through research better with, with uh, two-dimensional screens, with video modeling for, for input. But a, a video can never help with behavior. And right now, there are hundreds, probably millions of children around the world who need behavior intervention. And because it's a very bad allocation of resources where we have behaviorists playing flashcards. They should be working with behavior and let the computers flip flashcards. What that means is all these people who are on waiting lists who don't have any therapy, they now get therapy because that, that behaviorist is not wasting her time doing something that a can, computer can do. And because behaviors are so, I guess you could say, they're, they interfere with life so much, um, they're much more valuable to society to get under control. People can get their adverse behavior um, under control, they can have jobs, they can function in society, they don't take up SSI, they don't need to be institutionalized. And so that behaviorist now, just like the psychiatrist, is worth a lot more money to society. Instead of, you know, flipping flashcards, that's, you know, that, especially since a computer can do it, there's just no value there. Getting someone to stop adverse behaviors is invaluable. You went from making um, twenty fifty dollars an hour to one hundred fifty dollars, making five hundred bucks an hour. If you can get someone to stop their adverse behaviors and be able to f function in society, same. This is just like the psychiatrist, an SLP. So what's going to change with the SLPs is instead of doing the modeling where they're sitting in front of someone going but 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 a whole bunch, which a fair a computer program computer program could do much better. Computers can also use fluoroscopy like we do in Gemini and see the inside of your mouth, the t tongue, the teeth. So your brain, the viewer's brain can actually assimilate all those moving parts, which you can't do in life. In life. But a therapist can look at a student, even look at them through video, even with, with um, teletherapy, 
can look at a student and say, mm, he needs to work on this, he needs to work on this, he's got his tongue placement, so we, they, she will know exactly what videos to give him. With language, with syntax, with all the kinds of language issues that they're having, she'll be able to listen to him and hear him and say, oh, if he just, he just, he's missing this little bit of information, make a video session for it and give him the video. Come back in a week later, watch him, because he now, since he watched the video, he just had seven hours of therapy, which she would, he would never have had before. So then a the next 15 minute session, because now with video modeling teletherapy sessions, you can get your one-to-one -one with, the, with the, parent, the, the patient down to 15 minutes. You're watching him, okay, you got it. Okay, next, going on to the next step. She knows now what the next step is. Parents don't know that. Parents don't know what the next thing is to do. And sometimes they skip a bunch of steps and leave, hole, leave holes in the kid's therapy. And so they have to go backwards. And therapists will be able to, so she will be, they're going to have a lot better results using Gemini with the therapist. And since the therapist now can see four times as many people, she's going to get paid four times as much too. Now, people say, well, how is that going to save insurance companies money if they're having to pay the same? Well, because these people who they're treating now will be mainstreamed and will be having, will have jobs. Like with kids who use Gemini, the little kids who use Gemini, when they start using it 18 months, two years, are going into kindergarten with their asymptomatic for the parents who are doing it right. <laughs> I can say, again, we've got two groups. For the parents who are doing it right, those kids are going in asymptomatic into school. Now, if everybody had someone to oversee it, like a therapist who could oversee it, everybody would be going into kindergarten asymptomatic. What does that save society? How much money? We're just talking about money here because that's all insurance companies really care about. It's sad, but it's true. What does that save society? Millions, millions, just for the, the insurance companies. We talk about society, we're talking about hundreds of millions, billions you know, over this whole population. So that therapist has now gotten much more valuable to an insurance company. So what's going to change? Low-level intro therapists who are just starting out and they're cutting their teeth on, like, on just modeling, uh, they're going to need more training before, and, and I guess it's going to be more, um, which with, with video modeling, before that they can start making those, that kind of money. So we're looking at, you're going to be, and it's just like now CPAs have to know computers. It's the same thing. Before, no, no CPA knew what, what cared about computers. That was what scientists used. Now accountants use computers. It's going to be the same thing for therapists. Therapists are going to have to use computers. But I'm here to tell you, the study that we're just about to publish is going to prove that you're not going away ever. Absolutely, necess absolutely necessary. So much so that even the, the technology lady over here, when she launched in, in another language, decided just to go straight to that other language because now we have enough testimonials for parents to understand that they need to do it at home. Now, even so, I'm going to give you a little, little story here. So we, um, the government of Jordan did a pilot with Gemini Arabic. They chose seven families of children who had been in therapy for years and had no results from therapy. And so most of these kids had apraxia or suspected apraxia. In the rest of the world doesn't really diagnose apraxia, let's be honest. They don't diagnose it because it doesn't get you anywhere. But they, they, it was suspected. So seven families. Four of the families who actually used the program who, because remember, this is therapist oversight only in Arabic. So therapists called the parents. The parents answered the phone. They talked to the therapist. They, the, they showed the child the session that the therapist created. Those four families saw huge gains in just a month. Huge gains. With the children are talking, the parents are crying. It's great. The three families didn't answer the phone to the therapist, didn't ever do anything. And the reason why they didn't do anything, we found out later, is because they still couldn't believe that a video could have any effect. They thought it was silly. And so they're at the place where the American parents were, you know, 10 years ago when I was first doing this, not just not believing it could work. So now they're actually publishing a big article in Jordan Times about this pilot and how amazing it was. And we'll, hopefully it'll show the other parents, oh gosh, it actually did work. Let's try it. And this is why I've been so adamant about science and not even science as far as Gemini published science, but other discipline science, neurological science specifically on how video interacts with your brain to show parents that it is different than Disney, that it is different than live therapy neurologically. And once 
the therapy community realizes that this is their um their tickets <laughs> this is the way that they that they are going to further the profession just like accountants just like high psychiatrists make a lot more money and serve a lot more people the faster we can get to where we all need to be so um i think i've done a really bad terrible horrific job at getting this message out before and we did it in snippet cute little things here and there like we need a speech therapist but it really didn't explain why now that we have this study done and it's just about to be go to publication it's really it's something that literally that ashley could put it on the top of their their website this is you need us you need us more than you even know so much so so that technology won't even really work for a good portion of the population i would say almost half without you it won't so that was Laura Live today. Please share this with any therapist that you know. It's important that they understand kind of what's happening so they're not also worried about their, their profession with their, their livelihood because they just got really, really valuable, even more so than we already know they are. Do you do home visits, Helen? Me? Ooh. I used to all the time. That's what I did before. I used to teach people how to make videos. But um, I don't think you want me to come to your home. I'm actually not a licensed therapist. So you would probably, it better off if you have a licensed therapist that does work with your kids. I'll work with them and teach them how to use Gemini. And then you'll have the best of both worlds. That's the best thing to do. I love teaching therapists how to use Gemini because I teach one person and then they have all their clients and that it's much more efficient than me helping one kid. They can help everybody. All right. I'll see you later. I'll see you on Wednesday. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Bye.